Hi, uh, if you come back, this is the third video in the series. Uh, we're, with the recent update coming out, we're going over some basics and some important things to know your first or second playthrough of the game. Now, this time, this video, we're going to focus on Daybreak, which is their uh, multiplayer mode. We've done basic campaign uh, with tutorial explaining all the basics we've done a second playthrough showed what a boon is so this time we're gonna go with the multiplayer so your daybreak you go in and you notice you have the four things here your collection is what you get as you play through you'll unlock these items in the game. Now you can see I haven't unlocked everything. It's it's pretty tough to beat uh, the whole daybreak. I mean you can beat a few levels of it no problem but finishing the whole thing is actually pretty tough. I've made it uh, I think level 5 by myself but on my on my own single player I've never beaten Daybreak. Now, there is people that have. There's lots of people that have, but I'm just not that good at it. But as you play it, you uh, unlock different stuff. And down to, down to these consumables here, it's all normal stuff. Now, these top three, you only have to be like level one, level two, and you, you get unlocks. Level 3, level 4, you get these unlocks, which it's pretty simple to make it to level 4. So you should be able to unlock all 6 weapons, top 6 guns, and the top 3 explosives with very little work. Getting these bottom 3 Clio guns, bottom 3 explosives, requires you to get to level 5. As I said, I've gotten there by myself, and you of course have two computers when you're single player. I've gotten to level 5 by myself. So it's possible for anybody out there who starts to get good at this to get all of these down to here. Unlocked in Daybreak and in State of Decay 2. Like I said, I'm still missing one, but you can clearly see... I've made it to level 5 a couple times because I have these ones. Now, what makes Daybreak good, and I'll say it's, it's very tough, but what makes it good is red talent items. Now, down here you have these red talent things. Now, these require you to either make it to level 5 or uh, or beat the uh, daybreak mode which you know in multiplayer you know if you have if you have more people than just you let's say you have uh, three people it's pretty doable because if you have good aim and you take your time right, let me let me snag a drink real quick here Okay, um, so these these bottom ones here, these these nine, uh, as you can see, I haven't unlocked the final, and I only have a partial download for that one. They are the most by far difficult. You have to beat the, you have to beat all of Daybreak, which, as I said, you know, takes usually takes three people. I have beaten it with one other friend, but we've only done it a couple times. That's kind of rare. So, but with three people, it's pretty doable. You just gotta have good guns, be fairly decent, and learn a method of the way the zombies come in, the way they filter in, you know, what goes on. 
So, these uh, top three, you start with the Clio Tumbler, which it's really not very useful because it destroys your range. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't like it personally. Then you have a Clio Support Transmitter, which is a mod you can put in your base and you can spend points from Daybreak to uh, call in Clio Strikes in your regular game. You have the Red Talon Bunk Room, which uh, a regular small slot sheltered bed 2 gives you three beds and a mod slot. And if it's an indoor one, there's no no morale penalty. Now with this, it's it has to be indoor. It does have a morale penalty, but that's because it's a little more cramped. So it fits five beds in a small slot instead of three. But as I said in the last video, there is mods to negate morale penalties. So you can just put a morale penalty negate uh, mod in and you're taken care of <laughs> Clio accelerator this is worth using if you're looking at a, a rifle now you lose control but if you're using like an AK-47 and just firing like crazy yeah it's gonna be you know all over the place crapped up but if you're using a sniper rifle or like a 10-22 or something that you're just firing headshots or you're firing position shots like one you know and then you take a break fire one take a break fire one then it's great you have the red town watchtower which uh, if you upgrade or if you build a regular watchtower in game then you upgrade it to level 2. It gives you 2 active guards and negative 2 zombie threat. Now this takes the same size space, but it gives you 3 guards and it gives you negative 6 threat. Which, the Red Town Watchtower for Nightmare and Lethal is a must. If you're going to play either one of those difficulties, you better play daybreak and unlock that so you have to get pretty good at daybreak and you're gonna have to do this I, you know it's it's just something you gotta slam through red town workshop it, it's better than a workshop three but certain certain bases already have a workshop built in and you don't have to mess with it but this does do passive repairs to your melee and ranged weapons. So, once again, in Lethal and Nightmare, having repair passive repairs done is great. Especially if you have to use the suppressor, which you will, because Lethal and Nightmare, the sound is increased. So you'll have to use an advanced suppressor on everything. So it will eat away at your guns more. So having passive repairs... On those two high difficulties, possibly even dread, but not so much, will be very important. Then we move down to the third row, which, once again, you have to beat uh, Daybreak in order to get partial downloads for these. This is a Red Talon crafting station which allows you to craft red talon explosives, which are these six. Deployable minefields, deployable pyro, sticky grenades, remote grenades, you know, special stuff. That allows you to create those in State of Decay 2, the regular game, if you have these unlocked. Which, if you've gotten down this far, you know, the third row of the special red talent stuff, you already have all these unlocked. But they're not unlocked at the beginning. You have to you have to play to unlock them. The next one is the uh, officer's quarters. Now that's beds. So it's two beds. 
it gives you morale uh, and just it has other bonuses action speed experience green it's not a necessity it is neat but it's not a necessity by any means it's like having a sheltered bed facility but with extra bonuses and instead of three beds it has two but with all the extra bonuses it kind of levels out and the last one uh, I don't even remember what the last one is but clearly I haven't unlocked it I, I don't even have a partial for it so that's you know kind of disappointing but yeah, I'll get I'll get it eventually I'm sure but the bunk room for beds is great in in lethal especially the workshop is great in lethal especially once again because it has the passive repairs the red town watchtower is a must in lethal because of the uh, threat mitigation so these three you need each of these if you're going to play lethal, in my opinion. So, in order to buy one of each, you need uh, a total of 5,500 points. Which, that's a lot of points. Let's, let's be honest, that is, that is a huge amount of points, but it is well worth it. Especially if you've played all this time and got down here and unlocked if you've unlocked this one you're pretty good at daybreak and you know you've probably got a good amount of points but on average if you if you beat level four you probably get six to seven hundred points per time if you beat level five maybe 900 points if you beat level six you get like 1500 points so if you beat level four you know it doesn't take long you know like four or five games and you're you're there and it's not crazy but it takes a little time now you can find a game which would be of course join random people or you can start daybreak now there's no way to do a lobby which i wish they would fix there's no way to do a lobby, invite friends in, then start. You have to start the game. Wait for it to load, of course. You have to start the game. I'm choosing go with Cleo Heavy Sniper, Cleo Axe, and Deployable Minefield. But you can choose whatever you want if you play it. You've got those weapons to choose from, those explosives to choose from, if you've unlocked them. So, confirm, which loads you into the game. See, like, that would be a spot where there could be a lobby. But there's no lobby, which is disappointing. So what you have to do, you have to get in the game, sessions created, then, of course, you push your, your primary home or dashboard button or whatever you want to call it and then you invite someone to your game and it takes you know 30 seconds or something to invite someone and get them in your game now this guy won't wait forever he'll only wait like a minute and a half two minutes and then he automatically starts it you can't you can't prepare everything and then talk to him and start it you have to hurry up, open all these boxes, get these wall repair kits. So you have to go through, snag all the wall repair kits, and you have to run over in front of these walls, prep yourself, hold the Y button, drop one. Hold the Y button. You know, I'll do the same with these other ones. You want to drop one in front of all of these walls. And 
And then this wall is messed up. So then you got to repair this wall. But that'll put a kit by each one. So if the wall starts to get damaged, you don't have to hold it in your inventory. You just run over, pick it up, repair the wall. And then when you find another wall repair kit, which I have one spare, you drop it down. But it takes all but one repair kit to get things loaded. And see, he's, he's trying to start stuff right now. Like I said, it's a minute, a minute and a half. So you're just you're just getting people in and you're choosing your weapons. You know, get a get a second weapon, you can either do a shotgun or the uh Stormbringer or Horde Breaker. Certain weapons cost Cleo ammo like this Cleo sniper. So you gotta watch. But you see now it's it's automatically starting, you don't have a chance to say, hey, I don't want to start yet, let's wait. You know, like, let's say you had two friends, and, you know, one's busy finishing something up, but you, you're you at this point. You're like, hey, you gonna join? You know, it just, it's kind of annoying. But you get past that, try to form a, try to form a group before you start. Let's see what happens. They'll just come in, and you gotta... You gotta kill them. You fight them off until that meter in the top left is totally finished. But they will come up here and they'll they'll try to beat the crap out of your walls. Now, one thing that uh, helps a lot, and it's kind of a more advanced tip, but it's tough. If you can... Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, see that? You kind of nudge up there. You can get out on these lights here. And see, you can see... You can see real close down below. And you can see everything out on the main road. Fairly easy. Now, you either do that right here. Or you do that over on that side. There's also a light. Now I find this side, zombies come in, but they're easy for everyone to spot because it's a giant open area. Computers themselves can beat level one, that's why I'm not too worried. But this over here, the left side is dark and it's not so easy to see. So, oh, I gotta I think I gotta repair the wall, then I can stand up on it. It's tough to get up on those, and that's why I was kind of explaining. But as you as you play this more, you'll be able to. Yeah, see, there we go. Walls repaired. You can hop up. Get to the edge like that. The zombie over there, I can't see. Up, oh, they got him. There's still one there. But no, see, now you can see this whole area over here. Because these rocks block a lot of the vision from that right side. But if you're out on these lamp, you can see these walls so much easier. That really makes a difference when you're playing this. But, as you see, it goes through wave after wave. And if you make it through past wave 4, you get stuff unlocked. If you make it past wave 5, you get that more advanced stuff unlocked. you make it through wave 6, you get even more unlocked. It's just all about getting better and better at it till you... So you get good enough to uh, crush it, essentially. But as you can see, I'm not I'm not actively fighting. But if I were actively doing things, I'm just gonna shoot him just for fun. He's not dead. But if I were actively fighting up top here, these people wouldn't be getting close to the fence. But you know, I'm just. Just using this as an example, as tutorial, so...
course they're getting to the fence. But see, as they attack the fences, they get they take damage. If they destroy a fence, then any zombies that are at that fence will run in here. They'll come chew on this guy. Now, if he's got a health meter top left. If his health runs down to zero, you fail daybreak. And you have to start over again. Now, oh, it says, yep, there we go. See, there's a, there's one gone. See, they'll, they'll just run. See, well, he's, he's able to kill that one, but. I wanted to show you something else, so let me... Yeah, see there, now he's taking damage. You see that? Now, when he takes damage, you can heal him up using a bandage. Of course, he's barely taking anything, so I wouldn't do that. What you can do, though, is you drop a bandage here, just like you drop a wall repair kit, and you don't have to hold the extra bandage on you. See, so you got... You've got uh, ferals that come in, and that's. But yeah, I'm not worried about him getting eaten. He can, he can get eaten. I actually kind of want to show you what happens if you fail. So. So I'm gonna let everybody come in and kill him. And the zombies might not even be able to kill him level 2. It might take till level 3, so... But I'll be patient here. I can't destroy walls for the zombies. They gotta do it themselves. I mean... But they're... They're fairly smart AI. They will go to the weakest walls. And then run in. But see your... See your computer com people here? They don't help the technician. They just kind of shoot a zombie every once in a while. They're they're not very helpful. They're pretty pretty poor. Whereas the zombie has good AI, but your computer NPC people that are helping you have horrible AI. So it's best if you can get three humans to play. But after wave two, now it'll be two, three, four all the waves they drop those those are Clio support units now they drop multiples out in the field they drop multiples out in the field I'm just gonna show this one for example you'll find out many more when you play daybreak but these are Clio support units so you open it and they have random stuff in them now as you go farther along they have better and better stuff so the first couple or the first four waves they have ammo maybe a wall repair kit and some bandages after that you hit wave five and wave six they start leaving good explosives and uh, things like that in so at the start it's just basic stuff and you take everything out and it explodes But they beep, you know, they beep and they show up on your map. See, there's one right over there on my mini-map. But I'm not worried about that. The reason the explosives are so good, these are explosive minefields that I, I equipped from the start of it. Which is, you pick an open area, like that between those two rocks. You pick an open area, like over here. You put these down. And you can leave them there, and no zombies will blow them up or anything like that. They can stay there. But, and when you're ready, like, you, you drop them, like, the end of wave four. And when you're ready in wave five, you hold LB and RB, and they pop. And they shoot explosives out. Now, all those explosives are basically mines. Zombies walk over those. Boom. Done. Now, the reason I don't choose the pyro minefield is because the uh, SWAT zombies with the helmets and the military ones, they don't burn. So if you choose the explosive ones, see, like, there, watch the zombies die. 
Explosive ones will kill them. Let's see, watch him come in. Oh, he didn't die. But he did get downed. But if you do the fire ones, they'll light the fire ones and keep walking. A lot of times it'll kill them with the explosive ones. This time it just it just didn't. There's no other way to explain it. But normally you'd be here with like a sniper or something. And you'd be watching out here. And yes, I know there's people behind me. But you'd be watching out here. And be like, oh, there's a zombie coming. And I boned it. I totally missed him. You kill the zombies out there. Like if you were watching. You take out half the zombies. So your friends that are here on the base wouldn't have as hard of a... Oh, there goes a bloater. That's going to be funny. Oh, nope, they shot him. Your friends wouldn't have as hard of a time if you're picking off zombies. So if you got one person top left picking off half the zombies up there. Technician died. Okay. When the technician die, you fail. But if you have one person on the left side killing half the zombies coming in, one person on the right side killing half the zombies coming in, then, uh, you know, your, your third person left over in the center, he just, you know, he's outside the fence there just melee killing zombies, and it's a reasonable amount. He doesn't have a hard time, or she doesn't have a hard time. When you beat or die, either way, if you die, you still get the points, so you don't have to beat it to get points. But I went through two waves. I didn't even do any work. And basically get two, 230 plus points. 225 for the two waves. Two and six for the things killed. Now as you kill, you've got regular zombies, uh, bloaters, ferals, juggernauts, and blood plague juggernauts. There are no screamers. Because I think it's a computer thing, because if they had screamers, screamers would call in more zombies. And since there's a set number of zombies, I don't think they can have screamers. It just I'm sure it's just a programming thing. But you play the regular game, you know juggernauts are hard to kill. Now, if you have that heavy sniper, and you put like five rounds, just, it doesn't have to be in his head. I mean, it'd be great if it is his head, but it can be like in his chest or whatever. Just shoot him like four times, reload, shoot him a fifth, you shoot him a sixth time with that heavy sniper, he goes down, then you headshot him. That is the easiest way to take out juggernauts. Now that works with blood plague and regular ones. But if you get you get to level five the end of level five will have blood plague juggernaut. I think there's only one. Maybe there's two. But then level six, I mean, there there's like ten of them, so it ramps up real quick from level four to level six. That's what makes that the butter zone where you either win or lose. Now the blood plague ones, you know, they will give your people blood plague. You can die. It's possible to die, but at the beginning, like let's say you die in wave three, you're just your person. But the rest of your team lives. When it starts wave four, you will come back to life. Now, I'm going to tell you this because it's it's something people do. But let's say you have uh, explosives and ammo on you, and you're in wave uh, wave three, and there's three humans, so nobody will kill zombies unless. You know, the person does it. It's not automatic NPC. But you can die, and your body will be outside wherever you had it. And when you come back in wave four, you can loot your corpse and get free stuff. I mean, that's kind of cheating. It's like glitching things out, so I wouldn't suggest do it. But I've done it on accident a couple times. It happens. It's not a big deal. But it's, it's kind of one of those funny things that you can do. Just looting your corpse. It's, it's, it's weird. But you get the points. You can either say play again or quit. Now, if you had um, 
who had you and two friends in, and you say play again, and your other two friends also say play again, you will start the game all three together at that beginning. It still does the same thing. The game automatically starts after a minute and a half because the technician's a jerk. And you still have to collect the wall kits, but you'll start with your three people. And all three of you can take position. All three of you can have your weapons ready. And you can have a bandage down by the tech, the wall kits by the walls. And as soon as that first wave starts, everyone is ready to go. Like a snap of the fingers. So a person on the left could get on top of that light. A person on the right could get on top of the light. And your third person could be outside the fence on the street, just meleeing whatever you can't kill with guns. Now, if you have a fourth person, you have two people out on the street, that's even better. And then when uh, juggernauts come, you know, they retreat inside the, the gate or fence, whatever you want to call them, walls, and they work with the guns from in there. And your job as the people on top of the lights, either left or right, is to shoot incoming ferals, shoot incoming bloaters, and if you have a Cleo Heavy sniper, which I'd suggest the person on the left side on the light has, focus on those juggernauts. Even if you only put four shots into a juggernaut, that takes away like 80% of his health, so the other people can shoot and do some damage to him and then take him out. But you focus on those ferals, bloaters, and juggernauts, and you let that either one person or two people in the street melee fight the, the regular zombies. And once again, you if you all have good explosives, those minefields you saw me put out, those two, of course, all four of you would have two minefields. So you could beat level four, and then you'd have eight different minefields you could put out there. So it makes it, you know, ridiculously much easier to beat five and six. I mean, it won't kill everything, but as you saw, they kill a lot of stuff. And you can, the start of wave five... You can uh, have one person put theirs down, and then the second person put theirs down a little ways back, so it's not affected. And only the first person deploys with LB and RB, and then they blow up. The zombies die, and then that once almost all those are gone, the second person detonates, and all the explosives fly out in place. And then it kills the rest of Wave 5 and part of Wave 6. And at the end of Wave 5, as I said, they send explosives in those Cleo drops. So, all important, three people to four people is your best way to play. Get as far as you can. If you die on Wave 4, don't get frustrated. You know, play two or three games a day for a week. And then if you're, you'll have all the basic stuff unlocked. Even if you play by yourself, you should have the basic stuff unlocked. And then just grind for those red talent items at the end. Now you don't, of course, need the red talent items to fight the zombies. But you'll need the red talent items if you're going to go to lethal. But as I said, by the time you are ready to go to lethal, you have played the game, you have legacied a couple times, you understand how weapons work, which weapons work, how repairs work. It's all easy. So, I'm going to end it there. Uh, that is the Daybreak tutorial, essentially. And I will catch everybody later.